at the cabin. And I finished the book. Tigers in the Mud. This is written by Otto Karras. Uh, he was what they call a tank ace. And, you know, I first started reading about uh, World War II. It's really what got me into reading in the first place. Like, my late teens, early 20s. Uh, I've read quite a bit about it. Now, back in my late teens, early 20s, I was kind of an idiot, you know. And, and uh, I maybe thought differently about this kind of thing than I do now. you got to be kind of careful with these books because some of them will espouse Nazi ideology. Uh, but Karras does pretty good, and he doesn't do that. He's he's a little bit critical of Hitler and a little bit critical of, of uh, uh, the war and how the war is run. He doesn't ever say that he wasn't in the Nazi party. So I think that if he wasn't, he probably would have said that. So he probably joined the Nazi party like a lot of them did. It doesn't say in here how many tanks he's credited with. There's YouTube videos. If I really wanted to, I could go on there and see. He does survive the war. Uh, he's on the Eastern Front for the bulk of the war. And he gets really badly wounded. He gets shot like like five times. And, uh, and he has to go into the hospital. And when they take him out of the hospital, then they transfer him to, to the Western Front. And uh, he's a little bit critical of... He fights against American troops. He's a little bit critical of them. At one point, he uh, he goes and, and and him and some of his men go over and, and steal jeeps from the Americans. Apparently, they they think that it's a very easy thing to do uh, because their own uh, you know they're they call them Kubels, their Volkswagens that they're all destroyed. Uh, I mean, if you're looking for a book that outlines strategies and everything like that, this is not it. This is more, you know, the only real ranting that he does is he's, he's not real happy with uh, the way that the Germans, the German nation, turn their backs on the soldiers. Uh, you know, it's a very fine line. Uh, I mean, the same thing's going on here with the support the troops, you know. Uh, certainly nobody wants to see American troops get killed, but it, it's, it's hard to figure out where your heart lies when your country is, is fighting a war that, that is not justified and maybe ruining somebody's country. And obviously, World War II, uh, from the German perspective, it, it wasn't justified. They were just looking to increase their territory and steal people's raw materials and, and all of that. So, I've only got a couple of notes in here. Oh, and by the way, Otto Karras, he makes some noises in here about he may have been an atheist, which I don't know how unusual that was at that time. Uh, okay, my first note is second paragraph from the bottom, read. Uh, every nation can consider itself lucky when it has a young generation that gives all for country and so selflessly fights as did the Germans in both the world wars. No one has the right to reproach us as we were, as we were after the war, even if the ideals that filled us were misused. Let us hope that the present generation has spared the same disappointment as that which was handed to us, it would be even better if a time were to come when a country didn't need any soldiers because of permanent peace. Uh, you know, he's putting it mildly there, that their, their ideals were misused. And it's also the same note here. Oh, he's... <laughs> he's... He's full of praise for the Russians, whom, whom they call Ivan, you know, in the same way that... Uh, the Germans were referred to as Jerry. Uh, he's full of praise for the Russians, but not so much for the Americans. 
and this is the only part that I marked, uh, the Yank tanks actually did interest me, and I climbed up the flak tower. From there, I immediately saw approximately 20 enemy tanks set up in a neat little row about two and a half kilometers away. Now and then, they fired a salvo into the city. I thought to myself that we really ought to show these guys for once that we too had a few rounds of ammunition left. If they had already come over the big pond and had to be subjected to so much unnecessary fear, then they ought to be able to at least talk about one live round after their return home. That's the type of mean people we Germans are. <laughs> so yeah, he's got a little bit of a sense of humor. As a 230-page book, it took me four days to read it. There is a lot of documents here at the back that I haven't read. I did look through. He's got, you know, his official announcements to all of his decorations. On one side of the page, it's in German. On the other side of the page, it's been translated into English. I did, I, I think I read through that. Uh... He talks a little bit about the bomb plot against Hitler. And after that, he's awarded the oak leaves to the Knight's Cross. And generally, Hitler would have passed that out personally. But I think Hitler got a little bit paranoid after the bomb. So he wasn't doing that anymore. So he goes to some city in Germany where Himmler passes it out. And he gets to meet Himmler and he has dinner with Himmler. And Himmler sounds, you know, on the one side he sounds all right, but, but he's also a little bit crazy. He's talking about super weapons that are going to change the war and shit. Himmler lives in a train that uh, is able to go into a tunnel, so Himmler's pretty safe from the bombing. I think that's about it. I've been working on leaves up here, and it's raining off and on, so I have to stop.